I'm Aisha. You can now watch UCF TV 24 hours a day on Bright House Digital Channel 1. Coming up next on UCF Sports Night, row, row, row your boat right into UCF's new boathouse. We get a tour of the new facility on Lake Pickett. And the women's basketball team is blazing through conference play. We visit with Coach Joy Williams. All that and plenty more right now on UCF Sports Night. UCF Sports Night is brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show is also presented in part by Budweiser, the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Open up a world of taste. By the energy-saving conservation programs of Tico People's Gas. And by Syntex Homes, proud to support UCF Athletics. Hello and welcome to UCF Sports Night. I'm Jeff Sharon. Thank you so much for joining us. All of UCF's teams were in action on the road this week, including three spring sports making their season debuts. We'll get to them in a moment. But first, men's basketball was on the road up in Birmingham to take on the UAB Blazers in their first road conference game of the season. Let's take a look at the highlights. The Knights walked into a very tough place to play in Birmingham as they took on the Blazers. UCF jumped out to a lead and stayed there for most of the game. Jermaine Taylor led the Knights with 18 points and 7 rebounds. Also, A.J. Tyler came up big off the bench, going 4 of 6 from the field, scoring 8 points and hauling down 5 boards. UCF outshot UAB 44% to 33% and outscored the Blazers in the paint 28 to 24. However, UAB came storming back late and stole the victory. Final score 60 to 52, UCF falls in Alabama, dropping to 10 and 6 on the season. So the Knights went back out on the road over the weekend. They traveled out to Houston to play the Rice Owls. And the Owls kept this one close. This thing was tied at the break. But in the second half, the Knights lit the afterburners. Again, Jermaine Taylor came up big with a game-high 20 points. But the story here was Tony Davis. He continues to emerge as a force on the inside, scoring 17 points and pulling down 12 rebounds. Kenrick Zondervan also chipped in with a dozen points, and the Knights outscored the Owls 47-22 in the second half and got out of Houston with their first conference win on the season. Final score 77-52, UCF advances to 11-6 and 1-2 in the league, still in the middle of the pack with 13 league games to go. A tough battle for the women's basketball team on the road as they took on a team they had already beaten once, Southern Miss. This time it was the Golden Eagles who got the best of the Knights, pulling off a 69-64 victory. Asia Patrick had 14 points and 12 rebounds for UCF. Also, three other Knights hit for double figures, including Amber Kirkpatrick with 14 points of her own. Despite the loss, the Knights remain tied for first place in Conference USA with a 3-1 conference record. Elsewhere on the road, the men's tennis team opened its season with a very tough test at number 13 Tulsa. The Golden Hurricane came up with the victory. Blaze Schwartz came up with UCF's only point of the match with a three-set victory over Marco Balak. The women's tennis team, meanwhile, was down in Fort Myers for the Johan Creek Tennis Classic. No team results, only individual records were kept for this tournament. But UCF players scored a clean sweep over number 43 USF beating the Bulls in all three singles matches on Friday, plus two out of three in doubles. In track and field, two Knights posted NCAA qualifying marks in the first meet of the indoor season, the Kentucky Invitational up in Lexington. Tiki James and Jackie Coward both broke school records in the 60-meter hurdles, with James putting up the best time, an 8.30 in the finals. Also, Chantille Blackburn took first in the 800 meters, breaking her own school record of 209.74. And congrats to the UCF cheerleaders. They took third place in the 2009 National down at Disney. It's the 14th time in the past 16 years that UCF has finished in the top 10 and third straight year in the top three. Also, Night Moves finished 12th in the nation in dance hip hop and 9th in the jazz dance competition. 
And for more information on all of UCF sports, all you have to do is log on to www.ucfathletics.com, your home for UCF sports 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Stick around, coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, we take a visit out to beautiful Lake Pickett to check out UCF's new rowing facility. That and plenty more when UCF Sports Night returns. Fans join the men's basketball team Wednesday, January 21st as they return home for a conference matchup with Southern Miss. Tip-off at UCF Arena is at 7 p.m. Tickets are available by calling the ticket office at 407-UCF-1000 or by visiting UCFAthletics.com. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. UCF has a great tradition in the sport of rowing, but one thing that the rowing team did not have was its own place to call home. Well, after the dreadful hurricane season of 2004 blew down their original home, UCF decided to build a brand new rowing facility right there on the south shore of beautiful Lake Pickett. We get a tour of the brand new UCF rowing facility in our Sports Night Spotlight. Hi, I'm Tara Rogers. I'm Taylor Wyatt. And I'm Erin Bernier, and we're on the UCF rowing team, and we're going to take you on a tour of our boathouse. Come on in. First, we're going to take you into our locker room. This will be our first stop on a normal morning. We have plenty of lockers for our whole team. It's a long way from what we used to be. We used to be in the old football locker room. Now this is our equipment room. It's a little bit of a mess because we just moved in. This will give us plenty of space to organize our equipment. Here we are in our brand new ERG room. ERG is a short word for the rowing machine and it's short for ergometer. So this is an ERG. And every morning, well, when we're not actually on the water, we'll come in and spend a couple hours on third. Our total practice time is 20 hours a week and we have um, six days a week of practice. Our day off is Sunday. So we're here pretty much every single day of the week. We arrive at 6.20 in the morning is the time that practice begins and we will always have an afternoon workout as well that we're responsible for. This is our boat bay where we store all of our boats um, when we're not rowing them. Um, originally, we had a structure that was basically a barn that we converted into a boathouse. During the 2004 hurricanes, that barn was blown down after three hurricanes pummeled it. So we're really excited to have a safe place to store our boats. Um, as you can see, these are our boats and we will carry them down to our dock daily um, to row in our practice. We have these great racks that slide out so that our boats won't be damaged when we're carrying them by boats above or below them. This is our dock. Um, this is where we walk the boats down daily to put them in the water. Um, usually we'll be, we'll be carrying the boat on our shoulders at this point. Um, just past the end of our dock is the end of our race course, the finish line. Our race course is 2,000 meters and we have it fully buoyed. And that's where Duke will be coming on April 4th to have a race with us, our first one at the Lake Pickett um, rowing venue. Thank you for coming on a tour with us at the UCF Boathouse. We hope to see you here on April 4th on our race against Duke. Go Knights! Wow, what a journey it's been for the UCF rowing team coming from very humble beginnings and moving on to that beautiful brand new facility. And joining me now is head coach Becky Kramer. Coach, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Take us back to the summer of 2004 and the nasty hurricane season we had here in Central Florida. How, come, how far has your program come from that day? Um, we've come so far. Uh, during the hurricane season, the facility that we had been in was destroyed. And um, so at that point, we were operating in an empty field with nothing. And uh, between then and now, we've gone to NCAAs, we've had a top 10 ranking, and we've come so far. And being a facility now, it 
we're ready for the next step. How nice is it having your own place to call home? It's amazing. It, um, the team just carries themselves differently and they have a home and the equipment is stored and it's safe and it's being taken care of and we have electricity and running water and a locker room and we're able to train and it makes everything so much easier to be good. The students took us around, they showed us all of their favorite parts of it, but what's your favorite part of the new facility? Um, one of my favorite parts is just the fact that the equipment is now inside. Yeah. And so it's away from the elements, which will lead to more speed, but also just the view. It's got three of the walls are windows, and so each day we go out and we can watch the sunrise and see the lake. Yeah, it's a beautiful facility. Now tell us about the schedule that you've got coming up this season and some of the teams you'll be competing against. Uh, well, we've got a very, very competitive season, and we will be racing programs like Virginia and Tennessee Clemson, all three of which were at NCAAs last year. Mm -hmm. um, we also will fly out to California, to Sacramento, to be racing Cal and Stanford, Minnesota, also all of which who are at NCAAs. And so the majority of our teams we are racing this season have been at NCAAs, and so it's an aggressive schedule, but to be the best, you have to race the best. There you go. And now you also get to host regattas now at the new facility. What do you think that moment will be like on April the 4th when the Duke Blue Devils come down to uh, the new facility on Lake Pickett? It's going to be a huge moment, both for alumni, for the athletic department, for the team, to be able to showcase the facility that we have. And we're proud of it, and we know what it means. But to host a southern rival will It'll, it will be a very big moment. I know it's, it'll be something for you because you've been here for quite a long time as an yes. assistant and now as a head coach, and it's a great moment for you. And I'm so glad to know that we will be there uh, when it happens. So congratulations on the new facility and best much. of luck this season. Thank you very much. All right, stick around. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, we're going to sit down with head coach Joy Williams of the women's basketball team on a hot streak of late. Stick around. We're back after this. Fans, UCF baseball begins its season February 20th, and season tickets are available now, starting at just $99. To order, call the ticket office at 407-UCF-1000 or visit ucfathletics.com. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. The women's basketball team is off to a great start to the conference season. And joining me now is head coach Joy Williams. Once again, coach, welcome back to the show. Thank you, Jeff. Tell me about, uh, take me back to before that first game against Southern Miss in the arena where you guys came up with the big first conference win. What did you tell the team to refocus their energy for conference play? Well, it wasn't very hard. You know, our last game of the season, we played Southern Miss and lost 74-72 on our home court in the uh, conference tournament. So really the most motivation was very easy. They were very motivated. They were very hungry for that game. I think all the lessons that we learned from our tough non-conference schedule finally came together and we had some success that night. You guys get a big win in a very tight, very physical ball game against a very good Southern Miss team. What did the team learn from winning a game like that? Well, it, it builds confidence. I mean, I, I think our team uh, was confident going in the game, knowing that, that we could beat them, we could compete, but also knowing that it was not going to be easy. You know, it was a, it was a hard-fought game. They have some of the best players in the conference on that team. They have a very veteran team. So we learned that we've got to play for 40 minutes and, and execute our game plan. And if we do that, then we'll put ourselves in good shape to win games. It's so hard to win on the road in conference, but then you guys go out and get a win in Memphis to start out the road half of the conference schedule. You get a huge game from Emma Cannon, 34 and 20. How much has she emerged? Oh, she's, she's emerged. Um, just, she's doing a great job. She's really come along as a great rebounder. Um, she's probably one of the best instinctual rebounders that I've coached. Um, just very aggressive, and she's doing a lot better job finishing in the paint, and that's something that we challenge Emma to do. She's always gotten some good looks, but 
had struggled to finish, and, and she did that, and her teammates also did a great job getting her the ball. Then you go out to UAB, and then you get two straight wins on in conference on the road, which you know it's hard enough to win one, then you guys win two in a row in a place like that. Uh, what's been the key to this start for you guys? Well, I think it's just been um, our team being very hungry, and our team really realizing that there are so many things that, that we've learned from those non-conference games, that tough schedule again, and, and we're th doing those little things now that we weren't doing. So. Um, it's very encouraging. Um, however, we still have a long way to go. You know, our goals are to, to be, you know, in the top half of the league and, and really improve ourselves from last year. So if we keep doing what we're doing, I think we'll, we'll accomplish that. And as we look forward to that tough road ahead that you spoke about, uh, real quick, tell us what you got coming up on the schedule now that you guys have four conference games in the books. Well, we're, we're excited about a Rice team coming in. Um, you know, we went there last year, and that was one of our wins last year. Of course, they're much improved. They've got one of the top freshmen in the conference this year, so a very good point guard. And then uh, we go to Houston, and that's going to be a tough battle. They beat us here on our court, and we're looking forward to those two games uh, coming up. All right, Head Coach Joy Williams, thank you so much for joining us once again. We'll see you down the road. Thank you. All right, stick around. Coming up next here on UCF Sports Night, we'll take a look at our Sports Night Plays of the Week and some news and notes. We'll meet a new coach here at UCF. Stick around. We're back after this. Fans, join the UCF women's basketball team as they take on Rice on Thursday night at 7 p.m. at UCF Arena. Tickets are available by calling the ticket office at 407-UCF-1000 or by visiting ucfathletics.com. Welcome back to UCF Sports Night. We'll get to our Sports Night Plays of the Week in a moment. But first, let's take a look at some news and notes from this week in UCF Athletics. After a huge week on the road, Emma Cannon of the women's basketball team was named Conference USA Player of the Week. Cannon dropped 34 points and pulled down 20 rebounds last week against Memphis. She was 12 of 20 from the field in just 37 minutes. It was the first 30-20 game by a UCF Knight since Chantree Saxon did it back in 1996. Then Emma followed that performance up with another 14 points and six boards against UAB. It's now two weeks out of the last three that a UCF player has been named Conference Player of the Week. Chelsea Wiley got the award three weeks ago. With the spring sports underway, the conference is releasing its preseason polls and two UCF squads are tapped to finish fourth in Conference USA. First, the track and field team is picked to finish fourth in the league for the indoor season. And softball was picked to finish in fourth place as well, despite the fact that they're coming off their first Conference USA championship. Coach Renee Lewis Gillespie and her Knights begin play in early February. And in football news, Charlie Taff was officially introduced as the new offensive coordinator for head coach George O'Leary's Knights. Taff comes over from the Canadian Football League, where he was twice named Coach of the Year. He also oversaw Maryland's explosive offense from 2001 to 2005 and is the winningest head coach in the history of the Citadel. Coach Taff met with the media to speak about the new system he brings to Orlando. Uh, I was blown away by what I saw here. I mean, the, the opportunities and the potential here is really limitless. And uh, um, I hope what I can bring here uh, now maybe is some stability, uh, some consistency uh, in developing an offense that will serve us well, serve our football team and well, and give us a chance to be consistently uh, competitive at the highest levels in Conference USA. Time now for our Sports Night Plays of the Week. Play number three, men's hoops at UAB. Shot clock running down, UCF needs some divine intervention, and Taylor Young's prayer is answered at the shot clock buzzer. Taylor banks home this long three to extend UCF's lead heading into halftime against the Blazers. Play number two, congrats to the cheerleading team for their third consecutive top three finish at the national cheer and dance competitions in Disney. It is their 14th top 10 finish in the last 16 years. So a great job once again by coach Linda Gooch and her athletes this year. 
But play number one again is men's basketball against Rice. And Tony Davis came up huge in this game, but no bigger than this thunderous jam, which sparked UCF's big rally in the second half. Two of his 17 points to go with a dozen boards. Check it again as Tony takes care of business underneath, helping the Knights to their first conference win of this young season. And those are your Sports Night Plays of the Week. Action fires back up at home as we look toward the week ahead. It all starts with men's basketball finally back home for the first time in 11 days. They take on Southern Miss on Wednesday at 7 p.m. at UCF Arena. You can listen to the game on the Knights flagship station, AM740 WQTM, or you can watch the game online at UCFAthletics.com. Then the Knights follow that up on Sunday with a matchup with Marshall at the arena. Tip for that game is at 2 p.m. And again, the game is live on AM740 WQTM and at UCFAthletics.com. Women's basketball is also at home this week. They have a date with the Rice Owls on Thursday night at 7 p.m. at UCF Arena. And you can catch that game on UCFAthletics.com. Then the Knights head out west to Houston to take on the Cougars. That game is on Sunday at 3 p.m. and you can listen live on UCFAthletics.com. Women's tennis has a pair of dates this week. They have their first home match of the season Thursday at 2 p.m. as they take on Florida A&M over at the UCF Tennis Complex on campus next to the rec center. The Knights then head up to Gainesville on Saturday to take on the Florida Gators. That match is scheduled to begin at high noon. Meanwhile, the men's tennis team is at home for the first time this spring on Saturday. They take on Florida Gulf Coast at 11 a.m. at the UCF Tennis Complex. The track and field team is also in action on Saturday at the Florida Invitational. Events take place all day up in Gainesville. On the air, check out the Kirk Spiraw Radio Call-In Show. Join Coach Spiraw and the voice of the Knights, Mark Daniels, as they talk UCF hoops with you, the fans, live Monday at 6 p.m. on AM 740 WQTN. Then check out UCF Sports Today with Kirk Spira as Coach and Mark take a look back at the week in UCF hoops with plenty of highlights and features. The show debuts Tuesdays at 4 p.m. on Sun Sports, and you can also see it on Bright House Sports Network and on UCF TV. And don't forget to catch UCF Sports Night immediately preceding UCF Sports Today every Tuesday at 3.30 p.m. on Sun Sports and also Tuesdays and Thursdays on Bright House Sports Network and all week on UCF TV. Check your local listings. And for all the latest on all UCF sports, visit UCFAthletics.com, your home for UCF sports 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And if you want to catch this episode of UCF Sports Night one more time or you want to see any of our archived episodes, all you have to do is log on to www.ucf.tv and click on UCF Sports Night. That is all for us for this week. For all of us here at UCF Athletics and UCF TV, I'm Jeff Sharon saying thank you so much for watching and go Knights! Hey, this is LT from 1011 WJRR. You're listening to the best sounds of area music. UCF Athletics, Access Magazine, and WJRR are proud to support local artists. You can find more great artists by going online at www.wjrr.com and also accessmag.com. And by listening to Native Noise each and every Sunday at 11 o'clock. UCF Sports Night has been brought to you by UCF TV. Today's show is also presented in part by... Bright House Networks. See how bright life can be. By Holler Classic, the official automotive group of the UCF Knights. And by Coca-Cola. Welcome to the Coke side of life.